lectionary reading and commentary from the morning service, January 18. Genesis chapter 8 is our first reading, verses 15, 9 through 7. And God spake unto Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife and thy sons and thy sons' wives with thee. Bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee of all flesh, both of fowl and of cattle, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed abundantly in the earth, and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. And Noah went forth, and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him. Every beast, every creeping thing, and every fowl, and every whatsoever creepeth upon the earth after their kinds, went forth out of the ark. And Noah built an altar unto Yahweh, and took every clean beast, and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. You can pause there. Yes, he knew what was a clean beast, as we know. It says he took seven pairs of clean and only one pair of unclean were brought onto the ark. Next verse. And Yahweh smelled the savor, a sweet savor. And Yahweh said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more everything, every living thing, as I have done. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest and cold and heat, and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. So it says you, we have this promise that while the earth remains, okay, we're going to have this seed time and harvest. It's going to remain and, and it will not cease. The day and the night will not cease. It says the cold and the heat and the summer and the winter. So we have these seasons here, seed time, harvest, cold, heat, summer, and winter. Praise be to God. Next verse. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, this is key, when God blesses someone, you know, it's down to the generations. And he, we're going to get into some generational blessings here, which are very important, as well as some duties. Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fowl of the air, upon all that moveth, moveth upon the earth and upon all fishes of the sea. Into your hand are they delivered. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. Even as the green herb have I given you all things. Of course, meat doesn't always mean to be eaten. As we know, Joshua also said that the Canaanites are our meat or our bread, which could mean useful or are, uh, you know, when, when they were to take the spoils in the battle against, because Joshua uttered, you know, kept the commandment to utterly destroy them. And that was when, you know, that declaration, they shall be meat for us, or they shall be our bread, also in other places, it doesn't mean that they actually ate them. And it says in other verses, not only that green herb, you know, is useful, sometimes it's useful for food, but sometimes it says you discern between the herbs, because there could be ones that are toxic and poisonous as well. You can't just eat every kind of an herb out there. Some people want to get into all kinds of weird theories, but it's not it's not in that verse. All right, next verse. But the flesh with life thereof, which is the blood thereof, you shall not eat. So while it's good to eat, uh, for example, any kind of um, meat and, and normal things, what happens is if you don't drain the blood, you can't eat it. So Moses was given very strict commandments about that and in any kind of normal meat processing today. If they don't drain the blood, it goes bad. It's well known. So quick, they could never get to the store shelves. So that's why in any kind of um, industry, they're, they're draining the blood. They vacuum that blood out and they found markets for it to, to use it for something. Um, but of course, God says to bury the blood. Um, so you have these practices 
most countryside butchers are not really selling the blood they're they're draining it and burying it you know when when you're maybe in some really big cattle farm industrial scale um where they're using the hormones and all the other baloney right maybe some of those are misusing the blood um uh, but uh god doesn't want us to do that but now here comes the next tough pill to swallow get ready for it and surely your blood of your lives will i require at the hand of every beast will i require it wait what do you mean beasts have hands okay well let's continue on and the hand of man and the hand of man he's requiring okay what is he requiring at the hand of every man's brother will i require the life of man what here we have god is saying that surely your blood of your lives will i require at the hand of every beast so it's saying if if someone takes a life and it's a beast that is taken alive god will require it where does he require it he's going to require it at the hand of every man's brother and he again says will i require the life of man so you are it's so clear if you just know basic english god requires it so whether it says here whether it's at the hand of every of a beast that, that an adamite was killed or at the hand of another adamite man that one of the descendants of noah are killed okay and we saw in the earlier verse that the dread shall be upon every beast of the earth they're they're afraid it says they're going to go into our hand they're delivered into our hand so any non-adamite race which are as we covered in the most recent lections very clear that there are pre-adamic nations and peoples um and we also see that from basic theology texts of really any seminary did have a few of the other theories as well but most stayed with the idea that kind after kind is produced like it says in the scripture and that there were pre-adamic nations like it says in the scripture and black seed does not produce white seed and white seed does not produce black seed they have different glands different organs as well and bone shaped and so forth it does not just come out like that but praise be to god he loves all people and he wants to restore and save his creation okay first of all but he's going to save them through israel as a as the high priesthood he will have what's called uh those who are not his sons and daughters who which will get a better name than sons and daughters for those who are humble and do not exalt themselves against the descendants of noah so they'll be fine but if they're coming after the blood of the descendants of noah of you know there are so many genealogies in the bible that go back to noah but also of the kings okay uh, in european so many annals where they list their genealogy back to noah and to adam not only the bible shows that it is so important to list it out but there are many who don't have that genealogy as christ said and as we covered all the flesh of the living all who had in their nostrils the breath of life were brought onto the ark besides noah's son so we had three or four places where which we saw in genesis 7 that um all the different races two of of the other races were brought onto the ark and that word for creature is also a a higher being it doesn't mean that it's a four-legged but in, as we read here at the hand of every beast and the hand of man and it's the same word used in hebrew there the hand of man and the hand of beast again living creature which also the higher angels are called living creatures no it's not only a lower thing it could be a higher thing as well um now also we have you know that word for hand could also be the paw the paw of a lion and the paw of a bear 
which David said he was delivered out of their hands. But here we read, God will require the life at, who's going to have to do it, it says? I'll require it at the hand of his brother. Okay, that means the brother is going to have to, you know, Yahweh's going to wait for that brother, and he's going to cause and allow, because there's plenty of scriptures about when the blood's innocent blood has been shed, um, that the earth groaneth. The blood crieth out. So many scriptures about the sins of blood, and this is just where a lot of that originates, okay? That's a whole other topic. You can get into that. Many things about the, the controversies of, of the, the blood of the innocent in the scripture. And many times reiterating the same verse here. That, and it's clearly spoken in this verse of Genesis uh, chapter 9. And so... That's why in our Christian nations we have the capital punishment is because when someone has slain innocent blood, um, they're to be taken to normal court. Okay, not saying anyone take the law into their own hands. But uh, that's why we've elected and that's why the people have had good governance as they have sought. As it says, his kingdom come. And kingdom means his laws, his Okay, and his people, his nation, his tribes. This is the word kingdom. Okay, and you pray, and you, his kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Well, how's it being done on earth? How's it being done in heaven? It's doing pretty good. It says you're to pray, it's also done that good on earth. And it says you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Well, righteousness is when you keep the law perfectly. Seek it being done. 73% of God's law is only national level applicable, not personal level applicable. So we're always seeing that theme that you're going to be praying that you're doing his laws, which are national laws. doesn't mean we're taking any laws in our own hand. It is talking about you're praying for your communities, you're praying for your city, your state, your nation, and so forth. And he is raising up the kingdom nation, not um, the worldly nations in the next age. We're seeing the end of the age of grace and we're going into that kingdom age where it's more the pure law uh, being done on earth and he will continue to keep his covenant as we see people go so far against nature and against his laws it says that the holy spirit in those days will magnify his law and make it honorable and so when you understand that first john 3 4 tells us what the definition of sin is Sin is transgression of the law. So any of the transgressions of the law, including the 73% of the law, which is the national laws, any of those laws, we've got to pray about those for his mercy and seek his kingdom and pray and do what he, the freedom that he has allowed us to have is just basically to get even constitutional amendments put in that's been part of the grace. We can get elect and vote and get that. People say it's not possible, but it is. We have the power. Not Don't anybody surrender from the victory. I want to say that only God's enemies have the power. I think God said we have the power. They, they are only ashes under your feet. Um, so if you're, if you're lower than ashes under our feet, okay. But I'm not with you. You're not with Christ. If you're with Christ, you're in his body, which is the head of all things to the church. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. And you're seated with him in heavenly places far above all power and principality, dominion and might. Not in the future, now. And that doesn't mean the world isn't, you know, being punished for things sometimes by a loving God who is, um, you know, chastising his children. That's where it says... Whom the Father loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son which he receives. So he'll allow national punishments, including to allow beasts to wreak havoc until, until the people repent of their sins in their personal life, the 23% or the 20, 
six percent of the law something thereabouts and the rest of the law the national law to, to pray about it because the rest will you know fall in place when we're just seeking him he makes it easier to keep the commandments than to resist the commandments so he does lay it all out that wow that's the easiest way to go that's the most peaceful way to go that's the most blessed way to go wow the blessings are over there and those who don't like his commandments they're going to keep finding it's wrong and it doesn't work it's against nature really the way that spirit everything is built for, on top of spirit you either have unclean and destruction or you have him as our foundation so we'll always find and it says even the mind of the flesh wars against the mind of the spirit and you have these two always warring in your members and you got to realize you have the mind of the flesh but you also have the mind of the spirit which is with god and the two are you're to crucify one and to lift up the other you're to walk by faith and you're to choose you're going to live by his word which is spirit he says my word is spirit and is life so i didn't mean to camp out there uh, so long let's get to the next part whoso sheddeth man's blood by man shall his blood be shed oh my goodness it's reiterating it a third time so it's so clear okay for in the image of god made he man so yeah any beast or any person who sheds innocent man blood uh, then god requires it and he says it again whoso sheds man's blood doesn't doesn't say only some of them whoever whoever sheddeth man's blood by man shall his blood be shed so you're to seek the justice you know you're to for example there are little things that people just make jokes about oh that person is so powerful in the government or you know in some part of the world right not being specific okay but that uh they think it can slide by we're not to do that we're to um uh, allow god to do it why is the serpents gentle as doves but allow god's um true justice he is king over all the ashes under our feet are not where we belong under we're above it it says you have the blessings of abraham that come upon us because cursed is anyone who hangeth on a tree and he died in our place as that and took the curse it says that's in galatians 3 he took the curse upon himself and that you now have the blessings of abraham upon the tribes we have the blessings of abraham it says you're the head and not the not the tail you're above and not beneath you lend and you do not borrow you walk in health not in sickness this is where you are this is your position in christ you don't have the curses through the blood of jesus christ so it's important to take the communion john six twenty seven says labor not for the meat which perisheth but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life which the son of man shall give unto you for him hath god the father sealed and you should go through the rest of that chapter six my flesh is meat indeed and my blood is drink indeed and is nourishment and you shall live in him and abide in him as you eat and are sealed by it seals uh, can lose their uh, sort of look you can seal a document it can wear out um, it can fall off you can get stained with things of the world you can fall into sin you can fall into emotional problems and so forth which is not what god has commanded for example there's attack and you might fall under it you might some people might uh not be going in perfect faith then you fall off of that bandwagon but god the father will seal you it says john 6 27 if you labor for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life with the son of man shall give unto you 
And it says, for him hath God the Father sealed. So you're abiding in him. It says, you abide in him as you eat my flesh. You abide in me. And I abide in you, Christ said. Just as I live from the Father, it says, you shall live by me as you eat my flesh and drink my blood. And they who do not drink my flesh and eat my blood, he says, they have no life in them. Go read it. John chapter 6. We need to get more people doing the weekly communion, at least weekly. Okay. Every Hebrew home did it. And uh, Christ taught it. And we can show it to you in the Word. It's a very clear teaching. As Paul said, whenever you are gathered together in the assembly, is it not to break the body and the blood of Jesus Christ? So he had shown it and used the word agape feast, which was any Sabbath, all every every week. It, it was, and it says that they were daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house. So we have daily, plenty of daily scriptures with the communion, and plenty of weekly. Now it's a seal, okay? The smell, the aroma of it, okay? There was always fire. There was always candles, the actual altars. Um, any Anglican church, any Orthodox church, any Catholic church in the world uses the candles. When candles have a kind of a scent, and the incense, the anointing oil is typically surrounding all of that. So you have a seal going on. The fresh oil. Okay. The oil lamps. They're almost all with oil. You have all of this surrounding a typical service. And you have, even when the Hebrews, they take what's called the Kiddush of the version of the bread, that they put part of the dough in the oven and burn it. Because, so there's an aroma even to this day, okay, even the word Kiddush for communion means the sanctified part, sanctified part of your bread. And also the word for thanksgiving is used in the prayer, which is the word for Eucharist, or the word for thanksgiving, which is the word for the communion. It's a thanking God. So it's thanking him all the time. And the oldest scriptures, or the end, the oldest uh, Christian writings say, thank him at all times and the word for communion communicate the word for eucharist okay so you're going to have you know when you're taking it you know if someone is drinking the only blood the blood of the only begotten son of god the most powerful most pure most strongest thing in the universe itself it's going to stay with you, all right? There are cycles and things where, you know, you want to renew. You, it says be renewed in him, right? You are transformed by the renewing of your mind in the image of God who created him. So it says that we're to be transformed by the renewing of our mind and the knowledge of the image and so forth. There's many different scriptures about renewing and being transformed into his image. As we know, he is in the resurrection now, okay? And we're to be also living a life, as it says, he that raised up God would also quicken your mortal bodies. And it's talking about in the now, in that verse. It says that same power. So, I thought I'd throw that in about this, this uh, part of the verse and, uh, on the image of, of God made he man. And finally, and you be fruitful and multiply, bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply therein. So this is a blessing. It's all part of that blessing. The thing about the blood, the thing about all that is a blessing about requiring the life of man. It's all a blessing about multiplying and bringing forth abundantly in the earth. That means he's he's making it happen. He's doing it, not us. Okay, we you just yield to it. 
and, and it's part of the blessing that you're to celebrate. Hooray, hallelujah. All right. The next verse, second reading, in Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. In the midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Yes, uh, we are to watch as if he's going to arrive. We are to watch and have those lamps to make that journey to meet him out halfway in the night to get ready for that marriage supper. You're to have those lamps burning. You're to have your, your feet, your shoes ready, it says, and your staff ready to go. Okay, so um, there are a lot of people who think, okay, well, he's not going to come now. We don't have to be good. Also, we don't need to save up things. So any kind of knowledge that you save up, any kind of um, something that in your life that can be likened to that oil, that fuel, okay, that kind of sustenance to get you past that next lap when he is arriving. And that's what it says. You're going to have the ten wise and the ten foolish. All the normal wise things that you know people are to do to do good in the earth, to be healthy and strong. Now, I'm not saying that people should all go to the mountains or all go to the desert, like it says, you know, if if one says, okay, there are many false Christs, and says, one will say, go to the desert, one will say, go here, go there, go to these secret places, and so forth. Sure, there, there's some, something about a place of safety. That's a different topic altogether. But when they're saying like, oh, Christ is here and Christ is there, it says he's going to come. As, when, he, when he comes, it's going to be as a lightning that comes from the, goes across the east to the west. He's going to meet you wherever you are. He's going to meet you in the communion. Like it says, he was revealed in the communion. And that he came and did communion twice on, this, on the first day of the week or eighth day uh, when he came to the apostles. Of course, they also gathered on Sabbath, it says, and they did break bread on the Sabbath. But you have the communion that his first two times uh, was together with them. Um, and, of course, they were all on Sabbath. Of course, they went to the synagogue. They all went to, to services. But then on the uh, first day of the week, it says they had, the doors were shut for fear of the Jews. So they were able to have a, a place apart somewhere and on the first day christ came to his people twice week one and week two for the originals and then also for letting doubting thomas uh, see him and immediately was breaking bread with them and and served so as he says this do this do your what they did what they offered that word for do is the word for offer and you it is called an offering, the greatest, best offering, sweet savor unto our Heavenly Father. But there will be foolish, there will be those who don't store up, there will be those who don't prepare of the things that he would have for them to get to that final stretch, who think, oh yeah, we can just run off and don't need to do anything uh, that, you know, would be basic in nature to make it through a night season to make it through let's say an EMP blast there's there are these bombs that are they're talking about that could be here in two seconds and we have no no way to defend against it the sonic 
uh, ultrasonic plus uh, the EMP. Not only that, there are other worse ones, but just to get all the power knocked out, this is that it would take a uh, hundred years to rebuild. We'd be set back a hundred years. That's fine, but I'm just saying these kind of times. Well, let's say it's not even that when comparable item. Just the time of of change. Just the time of you know all let's say the unrestricted warfare of all the different enemy nations of America, for example, who are gathering. They, for example, could say, "All right, we're coming in to revive our fifth column of this group and that group, which they have trained to rise up against America." It's called unrestricted warfare. They came into the institutions and so forth and taught against America. And uh, it's horrible, but uh, that's the fact. That's a fact. Enemy nations do that kind of thing. They train people inside within to turn against their their people. So we pray and hope and we are to pray for peace of the city. And we are to do things, which is kind of like storing up our oil, that give room for that light. Okay? So oil is like what you burn for the light in those lamps, it says. So you need to realize that we're to have a, a burning light of his truth in a, a situation and an environment where his light will continue on through the dark night of whatever problem or even for the arrival of the king himself at the time when he arrives. It's very hard if you don't have a lamp and you can go out on the road or let's say there's not a very good road. So think of it in those terms and use your wisdom. All right. So let's be with the wise ones, not with the unwise. Looking forward to the next lectionary commentary. Take care and may God bless.